Hi there, Mouseketeers. Welcome to the Disneyland Beat, where our toes tap to a Disneyland drum. And we always whistle while we work. When it comes to theme park attractions, projections and screen work can really improve a ride. But if it's done poorly or if it's overused, they can actually take away from the ride's experience. Today, we're going to look at the best of the best and find several times projections really helped Disney's dark rides. And also point out a few times when they didn't. Come on into the parks with us. Like, subscribe, and stick around. Disneyland is your land. <laughs> Come seek an adventure at your pirates, eh? Made the jump to life, please. Hi there, I'm TC. And I'm Amy. One thing you won't find on this list are projected motion simulator rides or rides in general that are completely reliant on projections to tell their story. So this isn't about rides like Star Tours or Soaring Around the World, and it's definitely not about video game rides like Toy Story Midway Mania or Web Slingers. This list is more about adding just the right amount of magic to dark rides full of practical effects. We think the projections and screen work are the most effective when they're used to support and enhance practical effects and characters. A great example of this is is Radiator Springs Racers. Radiator Springs Racers is easily the best Cars-themed attraction ever built, and Disney Imagineers use projections in innovative ways to bring it to life. Interior projectors inside the cars or screens are used to create the eyes, while outside the cars, small but powerful, usually floor-mounted projectors from in front project the mouths. And it's all animated really well, and it's quite different from the characters with static mouths that you meet and greet outside on Route 66. One of our favorite effects, one seen on several rides, is Red the Fire Truck's water effect created by projecting directly onto clear plastic. It's all really impressive projection mapping work and it creates very convincing Cars Land characters. It seems like no visit to Disneyland is complete without taking this magical flight over the rooftops of London past the second star to the right to Neverland. The ride opened in 1955, though the version we know today was created during a major refurbishment in 1983. In 2015, the classic dark ride got some upgrades adding in the projection mapping we enjoy today. Peter's shadow flying out of the nursery and Tinkerbell's magic making the kids fly at the beginning really adds to the start of the ride. And the projected movement added to the miniature Neverland with the waterfalls and the slowly erupted volcano are beautiful and fun. Another favorite effect is towards the end of the ride when Peter captains the Jolly Roger into the night sky with the help of Tinkerbell's pixie dust. It all adds to the story and experience without becoming a distraction or a movie. A year later, in 2016, another classic Disney attraction, Alice in Wonderland, was plus and received some impressive up-to-date screen and projection work. We really like the projected letters of the caterpillar and the playing croquet with the queen scene. They're both great examples of a serendipitous melding of practical and virtual scenery. But probably our favorite part is the Cheshire Cat. The projections allow him to disappear a stripe at a time, which was one of the most striking visual elements of the famous animated classic. And the Imagineers managed to capture it in real life. Impressive. The mapping must have taken a while in 2016. There are several impressive projected moments on Pirates of the Caribbean, but it's a good example of how you can go too far with technology when it's first introduced. Pirates is one of a few dark rides to have a major projected or screen element removed. It used to have a large fog curtain that was projected on in the dark tunnel right before the battle scene that was cut and it was replaced with a practical effect that uses a simple mirror to great effect. We think it was a good move. I mean, after all, the ride worked perfectly for years without any projections, and projections were a little bit overused when the technology technology became more accessible, so it was nice that they found a nice balance for this incredible ride. However, we do think they're used well at moments throughout the ride, most often as atmospheric effects. Our favorite is the rain and lightning storm behind the lone skeleton captain at the ship's wheel. To us, it's one of the most iconic moments at Disneyland. Not every projected rain moment is done as well, though some might be done better. Look here at the rain projections in Winnie the Pooh. There's not enough projectors to create a seamless image, and you can see the square edges. But also here in Snow White's Enchanted Wish, this animated rain is really incredible and it has a lot of detail and it seems to be pretty seamless. Pirate sells its moment very well. Rise of the Resistance, the newest and most modern attraction at Disneyland uses screen work and projection mapping all over the place. OLED screens create the ray hologram and projection mapping and embedded LEDs illuminate individual laser blasts and the damage that they inflict to the walls around you. And the projections in the transport ship with Lieutenant Beck and the huge hangar bay are quite impressive. 
But there are two virtual scenic moments that stand out to us as the most impressive on the ride, and they are the massive space battles as viewed from the bridge, and even more so the final one viewed from the cannon deck. When the Resistance fleet first arrives while we're spying on Kylo Ren and General Hux, it's very moving, and it's even more impressive as we are passing underneath the massive firing laser cannons. The sequences have more depth to them than pretty much anything we ever saw on Star Tours. They're projected onto angled surfaces that allow for your perspective to shift as you move, and they're so believable, and the animation, which is done by Industrial Light and Magic, is incredible. We think Haunted Mansion is actually so successful because it doesn't rely on projections. All of the practical effects from the stretching room scrims to the many Pepper's ghosts and the amazing blacklight painting are the real strength of the attraction. But there are a few moments we think projections really help sell. Most of them involve disembodied heads, but that's neither here nor there. Madame Leota's projected face is a fantastic effect that has always worked. At first, her head stayed static on the table, but now with some really well done mappings, it floats around the room. Walt Disney himself loved this effect, and it's also used in the statues in the graveyard. And we like the current Constance Hatchaway, which is projected, though we liked the old glowing heart too. But the best projected effect in the attic is the shadow piano player, whose animation is perfectly timed with the playing piano. And screens and projections helped the Hatbox Ghost finally join the mansion's cast as its head moves from its body to the Hatbox in its hand. Indiana Jones Adventure has a few impressive projection effects that work really well and a couple that don't. One of our favorites is in the insect room. Recreating the feeling from classic scenes in Raiders of the Lost Ark and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, you enter into a dark chamber only to have the car stall and its lights go out. As the lights come on, you see the walls are crawling with bugs. In this effect, the lights and the crawling bugs are all projected, but they also have lots of little plastic bugs on the wall too. It's really cool. One effect we don't think works very well on the ride we've affectionately named Rat Log. In the dark hallway with no scenery that seems to be a holding station before the finale of the ride, there's one effect that never really seems to read. There's a projected log that's projected onto fog that has rats running along it, and some of the rats even fall off of the log, presumably into your vehicle. But there's almost never enough fog when we come through, and it's usually really hard to see what it is at all. Space Mountain at Disneyland managed to make the lift hill one of the most exciting parts of the ride. The projection in the tunnel of the large lift hill creates motion and makes you feel like you're blasting out into the stars. Now I know this isn't the most popular opinion, but I actually preferred Hyperspace Mountain, the overlay that had a lot of projections and it took this idea and it added in a whole space battle. The best moment in Hyperspace Mountain is when a huge TIE fighter is revealed, suddenly surprising you at the end right before you blow it up. Love that moment. The final lift hill of Big Thunder Mountain used to have a bunch of huge boulders that would actually move around as you climbed up it. But we think the newly refurbished ending ties into the rest of the attraction quite nicely. Now, projections are used to show multiple fuses burning up the sides of the tunnel, which lead to an epic explosion. It's a detailed use of projection mapping that's viewed up close. You're only a few feet away from it, but they hold up and they sell the moment really well. So maybe this ride shouldn't be on the list, for this attraction certainly relies on projections almost completely, especially once you're in the rideable portion to tell its story. But it still represents some pretty impressive technological innovations in its projection use. When your gantry lift opens its doors, the projections you see have incredible depth to them. They change perspective realistically depending on if you're sitting center, left, or right of the images. And they are timed perfectly with the bouncing, dropping, and rising gantry lifts, which in itself is a really impressive feat. Well, now we turn it over to you. What are your favorite projection effects on Disneyland Dark Rides? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for joining us. See you real soon, Mouseketeers. See you real soon.